Yeah, evening again guys, girls. Um, I just want to do a quick one. Um, going back to what the uh, drug scene was like back in the day, you know, in the mid 80s, mid 90s. So yeah, uh, <coughs> one of the subs, T-side I think it was, was saying about the yard is back in the day. And yeah, I used to deal with them. And also about comparing the quality of the drugs, uh, the brown and white, back in the 80s, 90s to what it is now. So yeah, I'll get on with that. So in around 88, I've been away in Feltham, and then uh, I come out of Feltham and I was staying at a friend's house in uh, Crystal Palace Road in Dulwich by the Crystal Palace Tavern. And um, I'm mentioning this because uh, when we used to score around there, you know, uh, around 88, we used to go and get the brown off uh, one set of dealers and the white off another set of dealers, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, when I first started using a lot of the dealers for brown, they were all white guys and that. But then as the years went by, I think around 88, I was scoring off a few guys, African guys, round pack on and that, none had. And uh, the crack, when that came around, I was scoring off the yardies, off the West Indians. So... What happened, you know, around uh, 1990, 1991, there was a lot of uh, infighting between the Africans and the Yardies over drug territory and, you know, what they were selling and that. Because what it was, like I say, if you went to uh, an African guy to buy brown, then you got to go and see a Yardie, you know, another dealer to get, to get the white, to get the crack. So there was a war over this, so basically... Around Peckham and Nunhead, there was a, a little drugs war because the Yardies took the trade, the brown, the heroin trade, off of the, a lot of the Africans, you know, and there was a lot of stabbings and murders over this, you know. And after that, around uh, that area, South East London, South West London, you could then go and buy your crack off the Yardies, but also go and uh, buy heroin off them as well at the same time which made, made it uh, a lot easier for the user, you know. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the other thing I was going to say was about the quality. You know, back when I first started taking brown in 85, it was really strong, really good quality, really pure. And like I said before, the dealers, they used to uh, sieve the gear, the boulders, of the, they put the boulders in a tea strainer and sieve it to make it finer so they could, you know, make the bags go further you know but where it was really strong you didn't mind you know but uh yeah as the years went by possibly from about 98 onwards it started getting uh, really cheap and uh, a lot weaker as well you know by 1998 i could go and get uh an eighth three and a half grams of heroin for like 125 quid maybe even less sometimes you know around bermondsey and that um but a few years after it really started to change um, I think it was uh, after 2002, you know, you had 9-11. Um, uh, after that terrorist attack, uh, things started changing, you know, because of uh, importation and stuff. And uh, the world became a lot stricter, travel restrictions and stuff like that. So, you know, a lot of gear coming through Afghanistan, you know, and there was a war out there. So this changed everything. You know, I remember in 2002, going to buy gear, in South London, and it was fucking, it was rubbish, you know, it'd be complete manitol, you know, you know what manitol's like, it's a cutting agent, a baby's laxative, and it is actually illegal in this country, but I don't think it is in Italy, but it used to be quite a common cut with heroin back in the day, because when gear was cut with that, it would still run on the foil, it wouldn't be like if it was cut with paracetamol and leave loads of black lines and loads of shit, uh, manitol would actually run. But you knew that it was a manitol because um, it had like a really bright orange colour. And, um, you know, if there was too much cut in it, it'd be completely orange and it'd be completely shit. But, uh, yeah, that's what seemed to happen after 2002, you know. So I'd say, yeah, in about the last 20 years, the quality of the heroin has gone right downhill. And also... Um, the crack as well in the last few years, you know, the last 10, 15 years or so, it's all really changed, you know, it used to be really good, 
you know, in the 90s, the crack, and, you know, still so in the noughties and that, but in the last few years, you know, people, uh, they they wash it up and it's got bi bicarb left, left in it, you know, and you can tell that when you smoke it, it's got all black shit on the top of the pipe and it, it all tastes funny and, uh, yeah, you know, all this stuff now, it's all repressed, you know, like the brown. It comes into the country and uh, the dealers, they get it, uh, they chop it up and they bulk it up with a cutting agent, you know, like uh, crushed tablets, whatever, all sorts of bulking agents. And then what they do, they repress it together with uh, a hydraulic press and then they sell it on again. Uh, sell it on saying well yeah it's, that's how it came it's pure and all that you know and people think oh because it's all in one solid lump and all that that uh, it's possibly going to be good and that but it's just repress you know uh, and you get a lot of that these days you know you'll have people saying how good the gear is and you know and, and I've been caught over and over again like that you know being tempted and uh, you go and get it and it's just fucking rubbish, you know. What you got to remember is the dealers, they pay users to test the gear and say that it's good. They'll only get testers that will say it's good, you know, to other users so they can sell it, you know. Um, yeah. So it's a pretty nasty game, the heroin and the uh, crack game, the drugs game, you know. So I'm really glad that I'm just out of it, guys, you know. Um, I can't see myself ever getting back into all that again, you know. I mean, I've been out of that game now two, three years, you know. I think I I used crack once uh, last year. Well, possibly longer than that. I used heroin once last year and I regretted it. So I've had one slip up in the last two, three years, guys. So, yeah, I've done really well. So, you know, it's just that thing, you know. It's never too late to change, you know. And I used to think that in my thoughts. I used to think, why should I give up? There's no point now. I've been on it all my life. There's no point, but there is, you know. When it starts threatening your life, you know, and, and your health and on a daily basis is ruined because of your abuse of that stuff, you know, it's, um, it's a long road, but it's worth, worth stopping. And uh, I think it was Harry, Harry Layton asked me uh, how did I manage to stop. And I think with me, I treat it as an outside entity, this heroin and crack addiction. I don't see it as, as something that's wrong with me. I, I see it that I'm fighting an enemy uh, from outside. You know, so that's how I view it, you know. Um, yeah. And it's just willpower, really, you know, and that you've got to want to change to be able to stop. There's no point uh, kidding yourself. If you don't want to do it, you won't do it. But if you do really want to stop, you will, you know. And, uh, yeah, as, as I've said before, I don't tell lies on here or anything. I do have, but uh, I am under a clinic. Um, I do have uh, regular urine samples, you know, uh, breathalyzer tests, all that sort of stuff, um, you know, um, I'm on a little bit of medication that's being reduced at a slow rate, you know, but uh, I have got health conditions aside from that, you know, but uh, that was possibly all caused by uh, substance misuse as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to wrap that up really. Yeah, so that's about it, guys. And, uh, yeah, these little nighttime videos, they've been doing okay. You know, it's about seven o'clock now, but um, if I get this uploaded now, it might go up in the middle of the night, and um, the views have been doing all right on these ones. So, yeah, and uh, I'm up in London this week, seeing the family and that. Uh, I'm at, I am actually waiting to move up there, but uh, I still haven't heard anything yet, so fingers crossed uh, hear, hear about that soon, you know, and... Uh, that would be a lot better for the channel if I'm up in South London, you know, I can get some guests on and all that sort of stuff. And uh, and I just want to say again, you know, um, I, I don't do crime anymore, I don't do drugs anymore, you know, so yeah, and I'll be honest with you, I'm glad I'm out of that life, you know. And uh, I just want to say thanks to all you guys that watch this and support the channel, it means a lot to me. In fact, it sort of means everything to me because this is the only thing that I have got out in my life at the moment, you know, because uh, where I was on the drugs my whole life, that was my whole life. Now I've taken that out of the equation. Uh, when I took that out of the equation, there was nothing else left. So, yeah, uh, I'm glad that I've got this YouTube thing going on, you know. So, uh, yeah, anyway, guys, um, uh, it's Monday tomorrow. I hope you all have a good week. And, uh, 
just uh, stay safe and uh, take care guys and girls and I'll speak to you all soon. Thanks a lot. Cheers.